Okay, thank you very much. Um, so my name is Mark Bellworthy. I'm from Harlow College. Um, I've been working with Yanis Markopoulos from USP College, um, amongst other Harlow teachers as well. And our action research, and that's a good start, I've realised there's a typo on the first slide, our action research at the bottom, the impact of the use of technology in engaging learners. So quite a broad question. So just to give you a little bit of background of our general approaches. So Harlow College this year, we were 100% online from September. So our action research is not linked to online lessons, such as sharing lessons in Zoom and Microsoft Teams. It's additional technology um, within the lessons. USP College had a sort of a blended approach depending on lockdown restrictions and things like that. So our technology was mainly focused on Blue Tick, Desmos and Nearpod. Maybe used at different points throughout the year. And briefly, we had some cycles at Harlow College specifically where we looked at introducing this technology through homework, in class at the end of the session, and then in class as a mid activity, just to see if it had a sort of different impact on engagement. And obviously we were looking at engagement and motivation, but our analysis actually looked at grades as well. We just were interested to see if the usage impacted grades as well. So very, very briefly, um, barriers and obstacles that we needed to be aware of. Staff, um, need to be confident with the technology that we're using. So staff needed to be trained and you know, have confidence in how to use the technology. Obviously, if they weren't confident, that would impact the student's confidence as well. Uh, students needed to therefore have belief and buy-in and enthusiasm with the technology. It's no good using something that we don't believe in and we don't think is very good. So we had to be aware of that at the start. Students obviously have some initial motivation and habits, um, i.e. not very good ones at, with these students that we're um, sort of dealing with in the classrooms. They're reset students, so we needed to deal with that. And that might be um, in terms of getting them familiar with the technology, seeing if they, do they revise in the first place? Do they have a, a way of, uh, you know, accessing other resources? So that may have restricted some, some of their habits. Um, we needed to just be aware of if there were any issues with technology, and there were, which I will, I will talk about in shortly. Um, the Blue Tick uh, application we used was in its beta year, and unfortunately there were some issues that affected things. But we just needed to be aware that that couldn't be blamed necessarily for the motivation. And there was some cost uh, we had to purchase uh, Blue Tick. Uh, Nearpod and Desmos are free, the, the versions that we used. So our data collection, within those cycles, um, we performed a student survey um, initially in January and then in May for some comparison so we could compare the results to see if there were improvements. That gave us a range of quantitative and qualitative data. Um, just to give you a little idea, we started around October with the technology. So there we go, Blue Tick usage. Uh, we looked at the, how much the students were using Blue Tick since October. We then interviewed the students as well to get some qualitative data. So this was a verbal interview um, and we, you know, we wrote down their quotes and things. So this was in March. So we've got that student survey with a mixture of answers and then we can really go into detail with the students in March, a bit later in the year. Students grades we looked at as well, although our aim was motivation and engagement, we, again, we were interested in the student grades um, in terms of their usage as well. So specifically what we analyze now, specifically, we did start looking at the average blue tick usage in terms of time spent. And me and Viv looked at this and there were some interesting uh, results because there were some students that used blue tick for over 20 hours in the year, but had answered 15 questions or something like that. And it didn't really match up. You know, maybe the students were leaving themselves logged in or, you know, and it, it ended up being unreliable data. So we, we didn't really look at time spent on Blue Tick. What we decided to look at was the number of questions they answered. Because students work at a different pace. Um, you know, some students could answer 20 questions in an hour, some students maybe only four or five. So we looked at number of questions because the more questions they, they answered, the more they used it. 
And in terms of Nearpod usage, um, we compare that to motivation and engagement in the lessons. Now that is not easy to measure. It really comes down to teacher observations, qualitative um, discussions with the students, qualitative data that we received in the interviews. So that was difficult to measure, but I'll talk about that sh uh, shortly. And then of course the survey responses, we could analyze the differences between January and May. So this is the first uh, bit of data analysis from the previous slide. So number of questions on blue tick versus grade. So this is real data of the number of questions that they answered and they, the grade they got in their final assessment. So this is not necessarily the final grade they were awarded based on all the, um, you know, the college quality processes and things like this. This is what they achieved, first of all, in their final assessment. Um, so I'm just going to leave that there for a sec for you to look at. But as you can see, what we're hoping for, and I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. Um, Joss, could you give me a yes if you can see my mouse? See your maths? My mouse. Uh, oh, cursor. yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. So what we're hoping for here, ideally, is a sort of a positive correlation. Positive correlation would then tell us the more questions they do, the better grade they get. That's what we're sort of looking for. And you can see it's not perfect. And we've got a lot of students that perhaps didn't answer many questions, which perhaps we would expect. So what we ended up doing was we broke this down a bit into sections. We were interested if they got a grade four, three, you know, obviously a grade three and grade four. So four is the aim. So that now we can start seeing, were there more students on the left-hand side of that line or the right-hand side of that line? It's quite evenly split, quite evenly split. So then we added another line. This line is interesting because this is how many questions we set them in the class for homework, in mid-session, after. It was approximately 75 questions, approximately. It varied between teachers slightly. So what this now starts telling us is if they're above the line, they were engaging in this technology more than we'd set them outside of lessons. And now this starts getting interesting. All these students above this line were doing more work than we'd set them. Now, obviously there's some students lower down here. Let's look at that positive correlation. So we're interested in the bottom left section and the top right section now. So we would expect these students to be in this section. If they didn't use the technology very much, their grade was below a four. That's what, sort of what we'd expect there. Now, interestingly, there were some students who you didn't use the platform very much, Blue Tick, but got a grade four or five. Now, I think we'd expect that overall, really. We're going to have students that don't attend a lot. Um, perhaps don't engage, but somehow pull it out of the bag towards the end. So we're going to expect that. And just in terms of numbers, there are more students in this left bottom left-hand section than there are in this bottom right-hand section. So that's a good, good sign for us in our research. Now, if you look in the top right-hand section, this is where it becomes, again, more interesting. These students engage with Bluetick more than in the classroom and got a grade four or five. Now, that's good. That's good for us. But then if you look in the left-hand side here, the students that did more than 75 questions, there are not many there. There are not many that got under grade four. So what that starts to tell us is the more they use blue tick, the better grade they're getting perhaps. And now look at this blue, blue section. If we go even higher, and I'm gonna draw a line there. This is students that answered more than 250 questions. Now, the students that answered more than 250 questions, 100% of them, got a grade four or five in the, in the sample that we looked at. Now it's not a lot of students, it's seven students, but it's all of them. So if that can be a selling uh, quote, if you like, if you answer more than 250 questions on Blue Tick, you're guaranteed to get a grade four. How about that for motivation for next year? So it, it became really, really interesting. Um, just to point out as well here, two of these seven students, so this one here with 411 questions and 261, these students got a grade for in November. So they had answered that many questions in October and November. Perhaps up to January because they carried on attending until they got the results. But it's half the year and they were, you know, this student here with 411 could have answered over 800 questions if they carried on. But they obviously stopped attending in January. So 100% hit rate there just became interesting. But we weren't necessarily looking great. So I will move on. For now. So this is the qualitative comment from the students. Um, I won't read them all word for word, but I found using Bluetooth was rather easy and it is helpful with the stuff it provides the questions and 
on videos, just to prove I'm not editing these students' comments there, that's copied and pasted. Um, they like questions and videos. They like being um, <coughs> and videos for uh, in the different topics. And when you set a task, and I finish it, it gives you more maths to do. And if I don't like the topic, I will just not do it. So that's obviously a negative comment there, that the student didn't like working on their own and trying a new skill. And I wrote down a, a statistic from same side of your previous um, PowerPoint, actually. 62% uh, of your students prefer in class with a teacher. 11% of your students do not like to learn new things, I think was one of your stats. I hope I've got that right. 11% is very low. And that backs that up. Um, if I was told to do it in lessons, that would motivate me to do the work. So the students um, often forgot that that blue tick was there. If we set it for homework, they're not used to doing homework, perhaps, or not motivated, and they'd forget that it's there. Oh, I haven't done my homework this week, sorry, you know, et cetera. So they forgot it was there. They wanted some uh, reminders. Although it's interesting, they did say that they chose to use Corbett Maths instead or other websites. Just a few more comments. We actually asked them, when should we use it then? That was a question. And as you can see, we've got mixed results there. Some said homework, uh, some prefer homework because you've got more time than you're not pressured in the classroom. Could be done whenever, middle, middle or end of the class. So a real mixture there of when we should use it. Has it helped? Uh, yes, uh, it starts easy and works harder. Helps me understand content uh, better. The bottom comment there, personally, I prefer Nearpod. Now we weren't using Nearpod and Bluetick against each other. They were used as in different aspects, Bluetick more for independent research, Nearpod in the lessons. But that, that comment there was referring to problem solving questions where they needed you know, several steps and they maybe needed support. Um, oops, I've put both on, but I'll leave them there. So Nearpod, um, they prefer Nearpod because it's interactive and they can do rather than watch, they can talk to the student, they can get instant feedback. So they liked that instant feedback. This is what the students started to say, particularly down, down the bottom there. If I get stuck on a question, um, I can ask and you can go straight to the question. So we weren't able to see what work they were doing on Bluetick live as such until after they've completed a quiz. Um, it helped, in, helped my engagement in lessons and motivates me to do more. So there were some positive comments there and we didn't necessarily say, push them in that direction, but they started saying, I like Nearpod because I'm, I'm a bit more engaged in the lesson. So I'm going to highlight some comments here where there was a common theme. So these five comments here started to indicate to us that the students want instant feedback. They want that reward. They want that feedback from the teacher to say, yes, you're doing well, this is good, or no, this is how you do it. Whereas if they're on their own blue tick homework or at the end of the lesson and you say complete this for next week, who do they go to? So I don't think that's necessarily due to technology itself. Um, I think they want feedback from us generally. So it starts highlighting the importance of the role as a teacher, as a mentor, whatever you use really. But they were really interesting theme that started there with the comments. I'm gonna pass over to Yanis, who's gonna talk about the survey res results at USP College. Hi everyone, my name is Yanis and I, and I work at USP College and we've done this project in collaboration with Hello College. We had uh, weekly meetings, uh, despite being very busy, but we did find the time. And we're sharing a good practice as we went along. At USP College, I work with another colleague, and I'm going to show you the results we've used. Mark? Right. The, one of the questions we asked were, how much do you enjoy your math lesson? And as you can see, um, most of the students, they've made um, positive comments. And nobody said, uh, not at all. No. So they come to our lessons um, uh, trying to learn and we, we do everything we can to engage, engage the, the, the students. We try to do fun activities. And what I've started doing this year, I've done a lot of um, Fermi activities. Like I asked them questions like, how many cats in London? You know, you know random things. And they, they can see how they can use maths in a different context, it helps. Mark. Now, the next question was, how difficult is math for you? Um, and initially, um, when we saw the results, uh, the, we could say that uh, most students, um, they, they find it difficult. Despite everything, whatever we do, the students, they find math difficult. So this will probe um, 
our research for the future. You know, so, so no matter whatever we do, we've got to change the mindset of our students. Our students have encountered failure at GCSE, at school, and they come to us and our role is very difficult. And so um, this has given us the indication of what perhaps we could do for the future to work on the growth mindsets and how to change students' perception on maths. Thank you, Mark. Now, the next question was, um, how much of your math lessons do you understand? Um, this was um, encouraging. They understand um, uh, a lot, okay? They understand the lesson or the lessons. However, um, there's a problem with uh, long-term memory retention or exams. So what we do is, because we know that our students, they may not perform so well in exams or tests, we try to do a lot of exam practice. Um, we have long lessons, an hour and a half. So we devise at least uh, 20 uh, or 15 minutes with uh, exam style questions. So the students are used to how they can find this question uh, in exams. Thank you, Mark. And uh, this, uh, uh, how likely are you to spend extra uh, time doing maths outside the lessons? Um, uh, again, uh, the students, they have the intention to work outside the maths lesson doing their own revision, which is pleasing. Now, we use many platforms um, and we encourage them to do a lot of uh, online homework and this is working. Thank you, Mark. Uh, now, this is interesting. Um, despite whatever we do, uh, some students are shy to ask for help. Again, this links with the mindset. Uh, so again, we've got to break this barrier of learning. Okay, it's like a wall. It stops our students from making progress. Again, we try to, um, in the lessons, uh, to make uh, learning more fun, uh, and we encourage them to work harder and uh, to, to follow different methods. But again, the growth mindset we can see here. Mark, thank you. And last one, this is very interesting. Um, the question is um, from the students uh, to rate three things they find most helpful. Again, what came really high was the feedback. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I really like Desmos, and in my role, I help other teachers to, across the college how to improve. I'm a teacher improvement practitioner, and I can see the potential of Desmos. So, you know, it offers you the ability to give instant feedback. So, um, for example, if you have an online activity, you can see who's growing trees. You can see who's not engaged. And it feels like you're walking around the classroom. And although they're far away, five miles, 10 miles, you can ask the students, James, don't draw trees. And get on, you know, try to, try to do this attempt. So the feedback was fantastic and they love it. And then um, they could go back and check the work. And depending on my feedback, they could act on it. And then obviously it encourages uh, independent study and whenever they felt like, and the main thing is they could revise in their own time. And as well, they could felt, uh, they felt comfortable. You know, there was no pressure. They could do the activity whenever they wanted. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, so this brings us on, this is our final slide um, of our findings. So, so what, you know, what next? Um, so this is our conclusions. So the biggest challenge is the student's motivation early on in the academic year, whatever we use, whether it's technology or not. Uh, but, but particularly with technology, if you're using new technology, students need to believe in it. Um, and so there's barriers that you need to break down before you start introducing new, uh, new technology or platforms. Uh, so we feel there's further research needed on ways of motivating students to use technologies, or um, perhaps we should introduce technology in lessons. So this is this is a re reflection from Harlow College, really. I think we did things in a slightly wrong order this year. We started with homework. We introduced the technology in the lessons and then said, now give it a go on your own at home. You know, see if you can, you know, find some new things that you didn't know before and that sort of thing. In hindsight, we should have used it in the lesson first and then, you know, demonstrated it and showed how, how it, well it works, because we do believe in that technology. Um, so we sort of did things perhaps in the wrong order in, in hindsight. 
Um, but that reflects um, in what Yanis was saying with the growth mindset. So we're definitely looking at growth mindset from September 2021 and um, tackling that first of all. Uh, this is different to motivation, the word willing. Students are willing to use technology. There was no one that objected to using technology and said, oh, I don't want to give that a go. Or, if they could use their phones or iPads, they're loving it. So they're willing to, there's no, they're not objecting, that's not an extra barrier. Um, so that's, that's quite interesting that if you want to give technology a go, the students aren't going to object. And in the last five or so years at Harlow College, we're, we're very fortunate that our students get iPads and they're used to it. So if you can get students used to using technology, then you can try all these new great things out there. Our students need confidence in technology. So I've reflected on that a bit with Bluetech. Bluetech was in its um, beta year. Unfortunately, there were a few bugs and um, students putting in the answer not quite in the right format that the uh, platform wanted. So we're, we're actually going to move to Century next year because it is a bit more established. Uh, we're already using it for functional skills. So we, that's, you know, that's a, a barrier we don't want next year, a bug for students at home and they're working, they're really trying, but the technology causes an issue. Students want interactivity and want instant reward. Definitely, 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 whatever you do. Um, so Nearpod really showed us that when the students were working, they could say, Mark, can you, can you just look at this? Is this right? We can have a look and I can, you can either write on the screen or instant feedback. So uh, technology used in the classroom we think is better until you get maybe near exam times where they're you know, a little bit more motivated themselves, but they want that instant reward or impact. They want to feel improvement straight away. Um, or there's a second question there, do we actually need to help them become more resilient and cope with these setbacks? So there's, there's a second point there. Uh, there was on the whole a positive correlation between usage and positive outcomes. Of course, there were some students who didn't use Bluetooth uh, too much and got a grade four. Uh, you often don't want to highlight those students to the rest of the class, do you? But it happens, it happens. And there were students that put in a lot of effort and unfortunately got a grade three. So, it, But on the whole, there was a positive correlation. And like I said, if we could put a banner up saying, if you use two, if you answer 250 questions on Blue Tick, you're guaranteed to get a grade four. That can only help with the motivation next year. But that's just chapter one for us. Uh, we don't think we've got final conclusions yet. We want to continue using technology and exploring its impact, sharing best practice with others and hopefully more network partners. I know there are some other colleges that are using Century really well. I don't think we've nailed it this year. It's been an unusual year where we've had to get used to working online as well as this technology. So we're gonna continue using it, although it might not necessarily be an action research uh, aim next year. I definitely, and I know Yanis definitely want to continue looking into technology and its impact. So that's us, thank you. Um, and we look forward to, I've seen lots of questions and it does, uh, does bring up lots of questions, technology. So thank you very much. <laughs>